Of all the things we experience every day, few, if any, are quite as powerful and transformative as our chosen community. Are you a member of one that's caring and sharing? It makes a difference, you know. Seeing beautiful acts of kindness, listening to inspiring stories, and experiencing rural towns in ways we might never have thought of just a few years ago. And so, when I came across this article online, it sparked an idea. It describes the so-called real energy costs of running household appliances and reducing energy bills. However, it wasn't long before a not so helpful cawing chorus of those living comfortably with more began lecturing down to those they perceived as having or being less. Patronizing advice echoed from the dark corners of the internet. Wear an extra jumper or cuddle your dog to keep warm. And to make matters worse, they definitely weren't joking. We do not rise by tearing others down. Divided against one another, we are all made less. We are all made smaller, we are made weaker and alone. Divided, we fall. But then, instead of joining the negative chorus by reacting to them, I chose to act to find and share what might be a better solution for some of us. And there they were, budget-friendly electricity usage monitors on Amazon. This is a story about what can happen when we choose to care about the energy that makes our daily lives possible but that nibbles away at our monthly budget when we're not looking. About how we can take steps together to ease the cost of living crisis and about building community around an idea that helps make the right tools and resources accessible to everyone, affordably or for free. Over the last few weeks, we've recorded every step of the process as we tried to figure out one thing, what is the real cost of our household appliances? We're taking a closer look at our refrigerator, kettle, microwave, and TV. So prepare yourselves. All right, so over the next few weeks, we're going to measure our energy consumption. But first, what the heck is an electricity usage monitor and how do we set one up? These electricity usage monitors show us how much electricity our appliances are using. This is a package from Amazon. Let's see if we can get this. Right out the box, you can see we've got what looks to be a very simple, compact little device. Get rid of that. This bit here is where we plug in our kitchen appliances. These little things, whenever you're finished using or monitoring an appliance, you stick it in here and it resets everything to the factory settings. I'm gonna go and see if I can find out how to set this thing up. There's a button here that says cost. Just tap that button once and it will take you to the right menu. Then what you want to do, tap and hold the cost button until you see the digits in the bottom corner here start to flash. When that happens, tap the function button to move along each digit and then you can use the up and down buttons here. Once that's done, you then go and press cost again, just tap it and that sets your unit rate charge at 29 pence or depending on what your charge is, that one. The unit rate for us is 26 and a half pence per kilowatt hours and the standing charge, which is a charge sent by the energy company every day, regardless of whether we use any energy or not, is 28 and a half pence. To keep things really simple in this video, we're gonna round them up to just 29 pence. Let's go. 
This is all the equipment that we're going to be using over the next few weeks. We've got the electricity usage monitor, our notebook calendar, and this will be used to record our progress. This right here is our tariff information, and this is our good old ballpoint pen. So for the notebook here, we can simply record the data on a daily basis, weekly basis, or monthly basis. If you don't want to use the notebook, then we can also use the calendar. You can get this at your local supermarket. It's easy just to glance at when we're walking into the kitchen, cross out the day, each day you do it, or you can write the appliance and go into a bit more detail and write in the costs per day. It really is up to you. So we finished setting up the calendar, only took a few minutes. So hopefully this works. For the first two weeks, we've monitored our kettle and microwave, and we're beginning to better understand how much these appliances are impacting on our household budget. Day two, and the microwave has been used for 11 minutes and 10 seconds, and we're currently sitting at six pence for that. So the first thing that we started to notice was how empowering it feels to witness our costs rising in real time. The second thing we noticed was some of our um, electrical appliances were actually using more than what the manufacturers had stated on the appliances uh, themselves. Now for the kettle, for example, um, the manufacturer states that the energy usage is between 2,500 watts to 3,000 watts. That is what eats away at our monthly budgets when we're not looking. If we didn't have one of these, how would we really know how much we're paying for the appliances we use every day? So, when buying household appliances, it pays to look at the energy rating of the appliance to see which appliance is best value at the point of purchase and which appliance is best value every month of use for years to come. Many buyers look at the cheap upfront cost on the price tag in the retail store, but we don't factor in the cost of use once we get it home and have used it for a few months, even a few years. At this point in our energy monitoring project, we now have two weeks of data. Our kettle, which is one of our most frequently used appliances, is costing us £3.94. Our microwave, that's costing us just 75 pence over the same time frame. Our microwave might be impressive. It's frequently used. We use it no less than 10 to 15 minutes a day. And it's one of our main methods for cooking and reheating our meals. So our fortnightly cost of 75 pence, we can be sure that we're getting good value for money. Our kettle usage though could be better. At a fortnightly cost of £3.94, this is a, an area that potentially energy could be saved. Over the next two weeks, we put our toaster and TV to the test. We typically use our toaster once per day to heat up some bread to have with our breakfast. With a daily power usage of 871 watts, our toaster is costing us just 10 pence every two weeks. The TV could be better. However, for elderly and disabled family members, this can quickly become one of their primary sources of news, information, and engagement with life. So for two weeks of motion picture, it cost us £7.98, which for the month, that roughly equates to about £15.96. For the whole year though, that adds up to £191.52. And based on monitoring our kitchen appliances, we wanted to find out whether our refrigerator and freezer consume a large amount of electricity. We are currently sitting at eight minutes and two seconds and a whopping 23 pence. That's just for opening and closing the fridge. So we bought refrigerator and freezer thermostats to place in our refrigerator and freezer where they were centrally located and visible when we opened the door. Our goal was to maintain the freezer at 10 to 20 degrees below freezing and our fridge at zero to four degrees, which is about 32 to 40 degrees Fahrenheit. Right, so 24 hours later, we've had to do some tweaking. 
The reason why is because when we first put the fridge thermometer in here, the temperature was all over the place. It was, one minute it was 10 degrees, next minute it was six or four, and then it was back to 10, and it just wasn't working. We changed the temperature in the fridge from one and a half to three. And what we're finding is the temperature is now maintaining between three and four degrees, which is perfect, exactly where we want it, which means a couple of things. The fridge is using less power to cool the fridge and we're having to replace less food. So we're saving money in two areas, which is great. So by monitoring the interior temperature, um, we were able to adjust the settings inside the fridge and the freezer to make sure that we were meeting those temperatures and also ultimately reduce our use of electricity. We are actually really impressed by our fridge freezer. Now, considering it's operational 24 seven, it only has a daily power usage of 91 watts, which comes in at a fortnightly cost of £2.98. That's roughly about 5 dollars per month or 71 52 for a whole year. Open doors to homes, refrigerators and freezers can cost us in higher energy bills and in accidents. So in households with children or forgetful adults, it can help to have an alert that lets us know when certain doors are opened and not closed. Something that might help is to put a simple magnetic switch connected to a chime alert that sounds every time the refrigerator or freezer doors are opened. We also converted from using our large kitchen oven to using a smaller countertop convection and toaster oven together with our microwave and we hope to add a pressure cooker and slow cooker when our budget allows. By using our stovetop and large ovens less or not at all, we dramatically reduce our use of electricity in the kitchen. While these changes might not be feasible for families with children, these solutions are very easy to adopt for single people and families without children in their households. Some of these changes might also work with simply one child in the household or with fewer teenagers who are preparing their own meals. The less you use ovens like these, the less heat that you're producing that requires refrigerators and freezers to counteract by cooling more. Knowing what's consuming the most electricity gives us the choice to either turn down, turn off, or replace with more energy efficient appliances. For households across Scotland, reducing energy consumption and um, costs will be about becoming more aware of usage and making small but cumulative changes to reduce usage and waste of resources. Simply converting to LED light bulbs, also turning light bulbs off, using less hot water, turning thermostats down and using more energy efficient appliances all help in helping us to reduce our energy consumption and costs. So little consistent changes add up. But why stop there? Since we figured out the cost of using our household appliances, we knew we had to take our actions even further if we wanted to help ease the cost of living crisis and build a community around an idea that helps make the right tools and resources accessible to everyone affordably or for free. So we reached out for help. Step one, we knew we were going to have to send some emails. So we contacted everyone we could think of, including the local library, the local energy supplier, various local councillors, and even the local high school science department. We wanted to ask them to share their thoughts on having a lending program at the local library that would allow us to check out a monitor at the local library, just like a book, so that people like us can find out which household appliances are consuming the most electricity and so that we can all make more cost-effective choices in our energy consumption. For the email to the local councillors, we asked them whether they would be interested in partnering with the Perth and Kinross Council to test a pilot program in or around their local area in partnership 
with the local public library as part of an energy conservation awareness project to promote Perth and Kinross Council's support of and connection to the local community. And for the high school, we asked for their thoughts on establishing an outreach to the high school science departments so that they can use the residential meters to teach energy conservation as part of climate change education and as part of good stewardship of natural resources and energy use and as part of managing a household budget and household costs for energy use. Councillor Alastair Bailey responded and he says, I am not aware of such a program, but with the rollout of smart meters, people are getting these anyway. Maybe something to check before the council invests in what you suggest, which otherwise is a good suggestion for sure. And finally, the local energy supplier, Scottish and Southern Energy are yet to respond. However, we did use their live chat on their website to inquire whether or not these smart meters would be available to non-paying customers. And their answer simply informs us that they are not. So if we do want access to one, we're gonna have to pay up for it. Knowing this, we'd like to know how many of you would be interested in having a lending program at your local library that would allow you to check out a power monitor at your library, just like a book, and you could then take that home and find out which appliances were using the most electricity in your household. Consider how this might help us to reduce our household appliance usage and thereby reduce our electricity utility bill and ultimately our household's impact on our wallets and on climate change at the same time. Here are just a few ways that you can share your thoughts and ideas with us. Number one, visit our public poll and cast your vote. Number two, post your thoughts below this video. Number three, send us an email. All the links to the options above can be found in the video description. And until next time, remember, sharing is caring.